So here we're going to build the Tyranid Hierophant. What a way to finish off Nidwick, eh? So this is one of the biggest, or the biggest, uh, Nid model available, currently available from Forge World. This is a complete resin model, so there's many things to remember when working with resin. First off, wear a dust mask when you're prepping, if you haven't to sand the pieces down or anything like that. This kit isn't too bad for that. Um, a pair of clippers and a craft knife to shave away some of the flashings, um, and you're spot on. The next thing to remember is to wash the parts. Now, the way to do that is to take all the bits, once you've prepped them all, uh, get some warm soapy water, not boiling water, because that will soften the resin and will cause damage. Um, scrub them down with an old toothbrush or something like that. Make sure it's quite a heavy mix of uh, detergent in with the water. You want to get as much of that mold release, which is a sort of oily substance, off the model. Um, mainly because that will affect not only your gluing, but that will affect your painting. Uh, in later stages as well. Um, not too much else to mention really with the resin models. Um, if you haven't built one before, take your time. That is the most important thing. Good preparation equals a good product at the end. Stay calm, something that I'm sometimes not very good at. Um, so relax, enjoy the build, um, don't get frustrated. If something doesn't start, if something isn't working, set the bits down and walk away. Resin is quite unforgiving. If you break a bit, the, that joint is never going to be as strong again unless you pin it. So we're going to now talk through the tools and equipment that I'm going to be using for this. The first thing off is the glue. Now this is filler glue. This is instant MV, medium viscosity. This stuff is good. This is a fast setting glue and is very strong. Um, with the process we're combining it with is filler glue's conditioner. Now this is a bottle of liquid, which unfortunately is quite flammable and quite hazardous. Um, you put this on to the actual parts that you're about to glue, let it evaporate, um, say a few seconds afterwards it should have evaporated, apply the filler glue uh, to the part that's being glued, press them together, boom. This process, once the model has been cleaned and washed properly, this process will actually uh, give you such a strong bond that it will uh, achieve resin failure before the glue bond will fail. Um, filler glue have been a great help with us, have been giving us lots of information, lots of techniques that they've tried out themselves. Um, so with this combination, we should, hopefully in theory, if we wash the model properly and take our time in the prepping stage, shouldn't need to pin any of this model uh, to itself. If you guys can't get access, uh, ready access to filler glue, uh, from their website or whatnot. If you're going to be using regular super glue, you want to pin the legs and the arms and whatnot to the body because that super glue bond is not going to be as good as what filler glue uh, can actually do. So, with the glue aside, we have a file, just a small file from a tool set. Uh, this is once the parts have been clipped out, we're going to use this to file down the edges to make them flat, make them flush with the area that we're gluing them to. This will also give it a little bit more of a rough surface. Uh, for that super glue to take hold. And of course a pair of clippers. And these are going to be used for the majority of the build due to the fact if we had prepped every single part we would have a bag of claws and we'd have no idea where those claws and spiky bits went. So with that little bit of an introduction done we're going to get stuck into the build. So the first thing we're going to do is take the head of the Hierophant which is pretty cool in itself and set that down and we have two mandibles that go to either side of the head. Now these have just been clipped out. What we need to do is actually file these down on their glue areas which are here and here. So we'll just take the file and get ourselves a good edge or a good flat surface there. Now this can be quite dusty but it's quite a limited amount of dust we're creating. Make sure that's good and flat. That surface is a bit rougher. Okay. So with that done, these two parts are now ready to glue on. So we're going to take the filler glue conditioner, and this has a brush applicator on it, if I can show that under camera properly, a brush applicator, 
which we're going to apply to these cheek areas like so to either area where those mandibles are going to glue on. Now that will start to evaporate and if we just watch it and monitor that until that's evaporated enough that it's pretty much dry we can then start to apply the glue to the mandible parts. So we'll take our filler glue MV and we will just run a bit across that one and a bit across that one and then take the mandible and being very careful to place it right first time the other side. Hold it in place for a few moments and that mandible has now bonded. Same for the other side. Hold it in place for a few moments. Now we have our head with these mandibles now in place. So we'll move that to the side just to let that set a little bit more firmly. And then we'll continue on with our next step. So our next step requires this piece. This is sprue 8. Okay, now sprue 8, when I bring the body in to let you see, on this side of the rib cage, Sprue 8 takes several spikes to go to here and one to either side. So the next step is for us to clip out these pieces and we will then tie them up and glue them into place on this part of the body. So we just wipe that mess away. We've now clipped out the little claws that we require. Now that's just a simple matter of clipping them getting the file sanding or filing that bit flat that we've just clipped from. So no big deal and we thought we'd save you a little time viewing. So this is the main centre piece which will go uh, right up here in the very top. Following that line we'll take that one and we need to pick out two claws that go to either end. So maybe not that one, but this one. No, I'm right. <laughs> Excuse that. We have that. Then we have this claw. That one, and that one. And then we have two that go to either side, like that. So if we line that up, sort of bring the body in a little bit, you can see that these will correspond to the areas down here uh, in the middle of this piece of the rib cage. So what we now need to do, with those bits all clipped out and ready to go, we need to apply our conditioner to every part on the body that we now need it. Okay, so with the body in hand, And you can already smell it and it's quite a pungent smell. But we'll just dab it in kind of roughly in there. And we'll take one piece, one drop to each area up here and across the way to the other side down to there. Now I know this is quite awkward to see on camera. I can tell you it's quite awkward to hold the model like that as well. So now taking our time, being nice and slow with it, we need to take each claw carefully. I'll apply a dab of glue to each one. Maybe a little bit more than that. And then on the body. Like 
that when we have it lined up, just press it down to make sure it's getting good contact with the resin. And then take our next claw up and we will apply some glue to that as well. And again, this is quite awkward to see in this area. So something like that. And then we'll just work our way with the last three claws down. and then press it in the next hole down from this big one. Trying to keep the bits as lined up as best we can. It's not a terribly exact science when you're doing this, but we want to try and keep some sort of order. So we're down to the last two claws, and what we're going to do at this point is actually cheat. We're going to drop the glue into the two bottom areas, because these claws are quite small. And we don't want to glue our fingers together by accidentally touching the glue on the claw before we've actually put it into place. And take our final one. So we have that first set running down there. We then have our two claws to put to either side. So once again, because these claws are rather small, we're going to drop the glue into their locations. And these claws are going to point in towards this big gap. Once again, having to be careful on the placement because once the glue dries, this filler glue will be rock solid. So there we have one of them in. If we go around to the other side now, which again I have to keep apologising for, it's rather hard to see. And once again, it's just going to be a matter of pushing it in, giving it a little tweak, like so. So that is now sprue 8 placed, we'll now move this to the side, let it cure for a little bit and then we'll move on to the next set of these. So this is now sprue 9 that we're up to and what this does is we bring in the body. On the front rib cage, uh, sprue 9 basically splits into two pieces. This uh, shorter piece, which stops at this little point, covers the spikes from the center of the body just up a little bit. And our longer section covers from the very top at the base of the neck and goes right down the center as far as it can go. So from sprue 9, we've taken all the little bits off that go to the top of the rib cage, which will go from the nape, from the neck, just down the centre of the rib cage. 
So what we need to do now is with those now cleaned, cut out and cleaned, we're going to apply our conditioning uh, liquid to the rib cage area and then we're just going to glue all these down. So once again with the conditioner and along the very top of the neck we just need to apply bits all the way down. Move this out of the way for a moment. So with the conditioner now down, we're going to set the body over to the side for a moment. We'll take the biggest claw and apply some glue to it. And then from the top of the neck, this will glue on. I think we'll just point it out up towards the neck. We take it and just line it up with the neck. I'll have to tweak it a little bit as well as we put it down. So we have that in place there. Well then, like before, we're just going to add glue to each area down the centre here. So we have three, three, four, five, six. Six more claws to put on. One. We need to take the next biggest claw up and we'll start pointing them backwards as they move down the body. So just centre them up and as best as I can I'll try and show you placing them. So this glue does give you a little bit of time to play with the alignment of stuff, but not very much. Once you've set it and you've let it go for a few seconds, that's your lot. So like what I just did there and put a claw on back to front, just about have enough time to crack that before the glue finally takes hold and everything is rock solid. So I know this is quite difficult to see, but you just have to remember the golden rule to take your time with these sort of models. If you've actually bought it yourself, you know what you've paid for it and the last thing you need is to start rushing and see things break or the worst case scenario glue yourself to the model which is definitely something I have done numerous numerous times and our final tiny little claw complete that middle run down the front of the ribcage like that. So looking quite cool, nice and uh, spiky as always. Thank you Turnids. So move that off to the side, we'll then prep uh, the next set of talons or shapes which will complete this centre run in the ribcage. So once again we've clipped out those pieces. 
So we only have four this time, so it's easy enough to figure out biggest to smallest. So we have bigger, or biggest, smallest, smaller, smaller again, and smallest. So fantastic for that. And they're basically going to go biggest to smallest running up this way. So once again, just apply the conditioner. dab it around the areas that we're putting the parts onto. And move that to the side. And again, we'll start applying glue to here, to the actual claws. This is the preferable way to do it when you're applying uh, the glue to the area that has conditioner on it. You want to actually have the glue already on the part that you're handling and if I can just get that and hold it in place for a few moments and maybe tweak it a little bit So something like that, and then we'll just apply glue down these last three. And we'll just press the claws in. Drop the claw there. So we're going to have to start tweaking all around the area. Pull the claw off for a start and start correcting the ones that we've nudged out of place. But there we have those claws in now as well. So we'll move that off to the side. So what we're going to do now, we've shown you more or less the process of how these uh, little claw bits go on. There's a lot, lot more. And um, what I'm going to go through now is show you where each of the, re the remaining sprues go uh, based on the diagrams that are supplied with the model from Forge World. So we'll show you where each of those sprues go. We'll then run on ahead and do them all and then show you all the claws in place. So here we have the diagram that Forge World gave us. Now this isn't a particularly good diagram. Um, it's not like your regular instruction books. Uh, if this isn't working out for you, give Forge World a call. They're more than happy to help you out. We've called them a couple of times now uh, in regards to this model. They've been more than helpful and they always point out exactly where, you're, where you might be going wrong or where things are supposed to be placed that you maybe didn't figure out yourself. So don't panic. If you get confused, if you get lost with the build, call Forge World. They'll let you know. Uh, they'll be looking at the same diagram and they'll know because they've built the models a few times in house. So as you can see here, we'll start to pick out our sprues that we need to show off here. So the ones that we've already covered are the likes of uh, Sprue 9 and Sprue 8, which we've already covered. Uh, sprue 9 obviously takes the middle run of our uh, rib cage of the main rib cage. Sprue 8 took care of the back of the rib cage. And sprue 3, which is this one, goes up to the very top and does this top corner, uh, the right hand side of the model here, and just does that top part of the rib cage. Sprue 7 which uh, simultaneously does 
both ends of the ribcage. We also have sprue 2 which does the bottom right hand side of the uh, ribcage down on this side. So we look at the manual from our other side here. So you can see plenty of diagrams that show where our bits go. So if we look around sprue 1 which does some of the claws around the top of the carapace there. We also have sprue 6 which does the opposite side. Sprue 5 that also does a further piece along here as well. So we'll go through all of these now and we'll show you uh, what all these parts look like when they're actually on. Now the diagrams, like I said, aren't the best for the construction but they do give a good idea of where these parts all go. So I went on ahead and uh, put all the spikes and uh, the little claws and whatnot onto the body uh, following the manual that uh, or the diagrams that Forgeworld sent us uh, that actually come with the kit. So we're just going to show this under close cam now and again talk through uh, what sprues go where and uh, basically this will what you'll see what they look like when they've actually been placed. So if I flip and show this diagram first again and get it into a good area. Sprue 7, we'll start with it, is the front the front and rear of the rib cage on the higher fence left hand side and if I bring in the actual body itself you can see on that side there's the five claws the five claw segment will go here the four claw segment goes down at the bottom of that run sprue 9 which is the center which we showed earlier being placed is the middle row of spikes at the top and bottom of the rib cage and you can see them in place as well as they were shown uh, earlier in the build. Now sprues 2 and 3 do the right hand side of the body and 2 and 3, 3 does these 5 spikes at the top and 2 does these 4 spikes at the bottom. So onto this side of the diagram, sprue 6 up here is two t is uh, four sets of two little of two claws, a big one and a little one, which go along the edges of the carapace. And that is again on the left hand side. So we'll show those in place as well. So you can see two, two, this piece has been mismolded or broken. So we're actually going to paint that as a damaged bit of carapace. And then we have the final two at the back at the top there. And what you're looking for is the matching sprue, which I believe is sprue 5, which then does the same two sets on this side of the carapace as well. And all things uh, complete, you'll see sprue 4 down here on this part of the diagram does the claws on the inside of the carapace. Um, that's actually the right side, that's actually the correct side. So sprue 4 does these four claws on the inside of this area and then there's the corresponding sprue that looks identical here as well so again four larger, four larger claws which go on the inside and sprue 10 is two claws that go to either side of the throat so we have a large one which goes to the back and a smaller one which goes towards the front and on the other side of the throat as well uh, in the exact same area So now all that's done, this, that part of the build was the most tedious part of the build. From now on we're moving on to larger stuff, we're moving on to the vents that go on to the back, we're moving on to putting the tail on, putting the head on, uh, the guns, uh, legs and whatnot. So what we'll do now is start to go through all those larger pieces and then the very last pieces we're going to do is the sort of flesh, sort of hook, 
flash hook sort of styled pieces, whips that will actually go on to the chest. Um, but what we're going to do next, our next two steps actually, uh, we're going to put on the vents onto the back, onto the back carapace as there's a row of three that go along this part. There's then a central one which can either be a broken off one or a big solid one. We're actually going to glue the solid one on. The more bulk we add to this, I think the better this is going to look. Once we have the vents down, we're then going to glue the head in place. Once the head's in place, we're then going to glue the tail on. And then the process after that, once the tail's on, is we're going to add the legs, add the weapons, and then we'll take our final little pieces onto the chest. So following on with my sort of stepped instructions, the next things we're going to do is add the vents to the back of the carapace. Now I'm going to pair these up here now so you can see what we need to do and in what order they're actually going to be. So what we have here is largest, or sorry, smallest to largest. The smallest ones are going to go to the back, working their way up, and this is the top of the big central one uh, that can either be broken off or going to be solid. So what we need to do now is take our file and we need to smooth off the bottom of these as these have only been clipped so far and once that's done we'll then glue them onto the body. So if we just take one of these vents at a time and just give it a quick run with the file just to help smooth it off a little bit. And what's nice about resin is that it files and it sands very well. It powders very easily as well. That is one of the health risks, or sorry, the health sort of cautions as well to wear dust masks when you're actually using the sandpaper as the dust will get absolutely everywhere. A few of you guys on YouTube have had a good idea. When you have yourself some wet and dry sandpaper, keep it under a running tap and sand the part while the water is flowing over it. That way you're reducing the risk of the dust getting into the air and you're also cleaning uh, the dust off the model parts as you go along. Now that's a good tip for everybody. Um, if you have the sink that you can actually use this uh, for this, so say a kitchen sink, just make sure you clean it uh, properly afterwards so there's no residue lying in the sink for someone to wash their dishes in, then they're going to be eating resin dust. So that was a very good tip um, and that's something you should all uh, take care of. While we're in a studio atmosphere, you guys at home have got access to more cleaning material than what we have in here. Just go through this now and just level off these vents as much as we can. Like so. so we'll now bring the body in and we have a little bit of work to do to the body so on this area this is where the big vent will go on. We're going to file that a little bit as well. Again just to try and level off that area because at the minute it's molded as a sort of a broken off vent and we want the big vent to be actually on. So we'll do it that way. So we'll glue this one on first, this big top one on. and We'll bring in our filler glue conditioner again and we'll apply it to this piece. So we'll just give that a nice little bit of a coat there. And while we're at it as well, we're going to add the conditioner to the areas where the other vents go. So in these sort of pointed pieces of the carapace is where the other vents will go. So we just apply some conditioner into those. This will help clear out any uh, residue that has been left over after the washing process. Again, you guys at home can take a lot more time uh, cleaning these areas off. Uh, once you actually watch this video, you may have a better idea of where things are actually going to be going. Well, that's the plan anyway. We, we hope this is helping you guys. Uh, if any of you have the money to spare for a Hierophant and you're a big Nid fan like, uh, like Warren is, unfortunately, um, you'll have access to a lot more patience and a lot more time. So, as fast as we're trying to do this, we're still trying to do it with the same care and attention. So now... We'll stop our yammering and we'll get the filler glue out and we'll take our big top vent first and we're going to run a fair sized stripe of it down the middle of the part. 
and we'll lift the body up and under close cam you should be able to see it okay. The vent will press down into place like so. And just hold it for a few seconds and that's it in place. So you can see it hasn't met quite perfectly but what uh, we'll do in a later video, we'll actually hopefully show this in a later video, is filling, using the filler glue, uh, which also comes with a, a precision nozzle, or we have been given some precision nozzles, and show how the filler glue will actually fill that gap uh, nice and easily, and we'll also be able to, to sand that bond once it's uh, been put in. So we'll move on, and we'll start to do the rest of these vents. So largest at the front, working back to our smallest. So we'll, once again, we'll move the body out of the way. We'll bring our vents in and we'll pair them off again just to make sure we're picking up the right vents as we go along. So there's a medium vent, a medium vent, and then we have our two small ones. So we'll start with these ones, our larger vents. Once again, just apply some glue to that, a fair amount of glue. And on the body, to either side of our big central vent, these ones will then place in about here. So we'll hold that part in place for a few moments until the glue takes. So that's the first of the big vents in, we'll then go around to the other side and glue the next one in. We're then going to apply some glue into the area where the next large vent goes. And we'll just spread it out. We'll then take our large vent and press it into place as well. we'll just make sure that's holding nice and steady there. So there we have the first three vents all in place, all looking relatively good and symmetrical. So then we'll move on to the middle uh, sized vents, which are these ones. Once again, we're going to apply the filler glue into the areas like so. We'll then take the next vent and we'll press that into place there. And once again we'll just hold it in place for a few moments. Which is rather a, a rather painful process considering all the spikes we put on the previous steps are now stabbing me in the hand. So we have the medium vent, the first medium vent in. Once again we'll move around to the other side and apply glue into here again. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll then press this one into place and once again we'll just hold the part nice and tightly until it, the glue takes. So that should be enough. So we have those two vents now in place. We'll then move on to our smallest vents, which are right at the back here. So again, we'll just take some of the glue and we'll press our first small vent into place. So again, just holding for a few moments until the glue begins to take, like so. And then on our other side, we will then glue our final vent in at the back here. So once again, push it in, press the part down, and that's it. So we now have all the vents in place looking relatively good and symmetrical there. So with that done, we'll now move this to the side, we'll let the glue cure, and when we come back, we'll start to stick on the head and the tail. 
So now we're going to glue the head on. Uh, as you can see, we, as from earlier in the video, you can see we put the mandibles onto the head. It looks a little bit like some sort of fighter. Anyway, so we're going to be gluing this into place now. And if we take or bring our body in, the head will go here, obviously. Well, maybe not, obviously, if this is the first time you've ever seen the Hierophant. And it will sit in place pretty much exactly like that. So all we need to do is move that out of the way. Get our conditioner again, and we're going to plaster the inside of the neck with our fill of glue conditioner. And just get as much on it as possible just to make sure that this bond is going to be a nice strong bond. So now we'll set the body down gently. And on the back of the head, we'll apply our filler glue here and up the back and to either side. Get as much of it in there as we can. We know it's going to be a strong bond, but we want as much of this actually contacting the resin as possible. So with that all in place, bring the body back in and press it in like so. So this already sort of had a little bit of a clip sort of fit to it. So once that glue is set, that is going to be extremely difficult to remove, which is good considering uh, a lot of people out there um, will have resin models that will frequently fall apart on them. That can be quite frustrating. So we'll now mo we'll move this off to the side and we'll bring in our tail. Now the tail is going to need the exact same work um, as the head. So on the body and the tip area here, we'll apply the conditioner. Just all around that part. We'll move that off to the side. Well then on the tail, apply the filler glue in a sort of a thick circle. Once again, trying to make sure that as much of this is contacting the resin as possible. And this may be awkward to show, but we're going to have to try and line this up as best we can. And once we have it lined up, we need to hold it in place until the glue takes to the part. So there we have a matter of seconds and the filler glue has taken to that part very nicely. It's well lined up, there's a little bit of a gap, a very 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 slight gap sort of around that area, around this side of the body. But again we can show uh, those gaps being filled up, that's not hard to do. Um, if you don't have anything else, get a little bit of green stuff, roll a tiny little sausage of it out and just pat it in nice and gently and press it in with a, a craft knife to keep that a nice smooth uh, fill. So now we're going to have to move on to the legs. Now this is one of the more difficult parts. Uh, Forge World uh, uh, suggests you to make a base for the Hierophant, um, which is roughly, I think, about... Uh, 10 inches by maybe about 8 inches, but we'll see the proper dimensions for ourselves when we get the legs uh, in place. So we'll set the body down once again, and we'll now bring in this first leg, which is the right leg. So we need to glue to this side, and we're going to add conditioner uh, into the, the body, into the cavity on the body. So in this side, we're going to apply the conditioner all the way around like so we're then on the leg going to add glue all the way around this bowl this sort of dome shape So again, this is another part. We want as much glue down so that we know that this is going to be contacting as much as possible. Then find the leg 
where it will naturally sit. And then we press it in and we hold it. And again, we just have to hold it for a few moments until the glue completely takes. And that part is in, so we need a little bit longer than that. So there we have our first leg in place. We want to just make sure that, that is holding okay. That seems good and solid. So you can see the size of the leg now. When we get all the legs on, we're going to have to zoom out on our camera and actually start to show you how big this model actually gets. So if we roll over to the other side of the body. So once again, we just need to apply the conditioner to this part of the leg to the inside. Just all around it. And move that to the side. We'll then bring our second leg in. And again, we'll glue around it. We glue up around the top a little bit as well. Now again, Forge World suggests that you pin the leg. Um, if you're not using the type of glue that we're using here right now, the filler glue, that is the way we, that everyone would basically suggest you build the resin model. So Now with that leg in place, we're going to hold it in a little bit and see how big this model is getting. You can't see on close cam, but you can see on front cam how tall this thing is. And what we'll do now is just hold this leg in place for a while and then we'll let it cure and once that's done we'll then move on to our front legs. So the legs are now in place. It looks very unusual under close cam as you can probably imagine. So we'll now uh, set this to the side and we'll start to prep our front claws to go on as well. So we need to gently try and set this guy down. Now our front claws are going to be getting the exact same treatment as the legs, they're going to take the glue. So we need to condition the areas for our front legs to go in. And the front legs are going in on the rearmost uh, hole here. So once again just plaster that with the conditioner. Um, we'll also dry fit the front leg as well. Alright, I nearly dropped it. So we'll dry fit the front leg, which seems to be sitting okay. So on the front leg that uh, we were dry fitting, and it will sit into place about there. Hard to see under close cam, I know. But it will sit roughly about that. So then we need to apply glue to that part of the model now. So then we'll just take the glue and give it a good thick covering. Probably overdoing the glue, but if we hold the model right way up, we should probably also be able to get a good sense of where the claw is supposed to sit. So we'll hold it roughly in position. And when it, we think it's in position, we're going to move it away. And again, we'll just hold it for a few moments until the glue has completely taken. You can see our first front leg on looks rather cool. We'll then do the same process with the other front leg. So 
So once again, we need to condition the inside area here at the back. We then need to apply glue to this part of the model. So we'll just take the glue and just apply that right around that edge. And then just fill in and just coat that whole flat area. And we'll bring this increasingly huge body in. And I know it's hard to see, so don't worry. I know. And we'll just get it into position now that we have the other three legs completely solid. Okay, so you can now see both our front legs are on. This guy is starting to look increasingly more intimidating. So if we just leave them to the side now to cure, um, once the legs are completely set, we'll then move on and we'll stick on the weapons and our final few pieces as well. Okay, as you can now see, our higher front has his four legs and we gently set them down. You can see he now stands up on his own. We're trying not to put too much pressure on the legs as yet, as some of the glue is probably still setting. So, as you can now see, he is quite uh, the bulky one. Our next step along is now we're going to have to try and detail all this front area. So we have a lot of spikes, a lot of fleshy spikes to put on. We have two uh, guns to put on and we have a couple of extra claws. So we're going to have to set them down in such a way that you'll actually be able to see what's happening. That's pretty good looking to me there. So the next thing we're going to do is we have two claws to go into this joint and one on the opposite side. We have two of these, so if I set them down and just take the file to each one of them first, you know, let's see under close cam, just to roughen that edge up a little bit. Just to help the glue actually take to the part when you actually press them in. We'll then take our conditioning agent and we'll put it into the join. So just along there and on the underside from the other. So then we'll take the glue and we'll apply it to the back of one of these claws. And in that point, just press that claw in. Like so. And then we'll do the same for the other one. Hold it in place for a few moments. Like so. So that's those uh, claws on. The next thing we're going to do along that part are these. Our big sort of fleshy hook things. So we just need to clip those out. I'm going to move my glue to the side and just bring in my clippers. We've already tidied them up enough so we're just going to be clipping them out and they're going to glue in along uh, the front of the rib cage. So 
So we'll take eight of them. There's ten there, but we're going to take eight. And we're just going to have four either side of the rib cage around this area. So what we'll do with our conditioner, we're not too sure where I'm placing them yet, so if we just practically just paint that, that piece in the conditioner. Just coat this whole area. And what we'll do then is as we place each spike, we'll add a drop of glue to the very end of that part. So let's see what we've got here. Let's take our shortest two, which I've cut the shortest, and we'll put them right at the front here. So I'll just take the dab of glue and put it on the very end of said spike. And let's say, probably about here. Something like that. We'll then take the next one along. And we'll place it sort of opposite to our first one. Or maybe in an area that will fit better. Yes, yeah, so about there. There we are, that's our sort of flesh hooks in, looking rather cool. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to go down here to the bottom of the body and we have two leg supports now that we need to glue in. So, there's a specific sprue for this with the two parts on it. Now these parts on the sprue are labelled uh, L and R for left and right respectively. So we need to clip these pieces out, and we're going to start with the left one. I just need to make sure that they are the correct shape. We'll file the edges down a little bit, just to make sure that the glue will have a nice rough surface. So on the model, the left leg is the one that's down here. So we'll apply some glue or some of our conditioner to that area. And up in here as well, where this actually joins up. And then we're gonna add some glue to this going by this flat piece and right up at the end here. And this will go in and sort of look a bit like a some sort of weird bone or something, but maybe slide it into the body first. and it will sit in just across the leg like that. So we'll do the same process with the other side and we'll clip the part out. Parts that are sided like this left and right it's best to clip them out one at a time so you don't clip them both out and go which one goes to where. And again, we just need to add the conditioning agent into that area on the piece that is slightly off camera shot on the actual leg itself there. And 
once again we need to glue in the same spots so on the flat sort of plate and at the very end where we've clipped it from the sprue and then those will sit in nicely at the end Now we have both our leg supports in. So the very last thing to do is to glue the guns on. Well, I suppose we can't wait any longer, I suppose, so we may as well get this part done. So we'll lift the model up, being very careful. So you can see what this thing is starting to look like now. If I turn it around towards the camera, you can see just how vast this model is actually starting to get. So, without further ado, we will complete this model and get the guns on. So we have two here, we have one for this side and we have one for the other side. So maybe bring this all in a little bit more into shot. Show you what's going to be happening now. So basically, these are going to go in to these sockets here. So, what we'll do as before is get our conditioning agent and run it in around the joint. We'll then coat the ball joint on this arm with our filler glue. spread it out because we don't want to use too much now with the model actually standing upright we can then pose the guns reasonably well So now I'm just going to lift this up and hold it in place for a few moments and just to double check that everything is sitting where I want it to be. So now with that gun on, we then need to repeat the process for this side. Again, if we set the model down. Once again, take the conditioning agent. Let's see if I can get this round a bit more to show that joint a bit better. And just work it in to there. Once again, we're just going to be gluing over the ball joint on the arm. And I'll have to lift him out of camera shot for a moment to get the arm positioned in a similar sort of fashion to the other one. Once it's in place, we're just going to hold it steady. Like so. 
you can see how mean this guy looks from the face he's something else to behold really he is so guys with the build complete what did you think drop comments below we'll uh, read every single comment of course um, so let us know what you think did you like the resin build uh, what would you do differently? I know there's a lot of processes out there. Um, I'm personally following the instructions from Filaglue, who supplied the conditioning agent and the instant medium viscosity glue. Very good stuff. Um, and I'm also following the guidelines uh, that Forgewell told me over the phone as well. So to start by detailing the body, uh, the, the likes of the legs and the arms, sort of the last details you're really putting on. But thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed Nidweek, and we'll see you later. So with this build video complete, you might think this is the last you're going to see of the Hierophant. Not true. Keep your eye out for, say, a video called Hobby Essentials, where we might fill some gaps, we might show a few other techniques to help you finish off models like this. Um, there could be painting, who knows? Stay tuned.